wistful. What does wistful mean? It's a hint of longing and loss. Yeah, that's what I'm going and for. And a light level. That's what I'm going for when I say bye. 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 Wistful? Wistful. That's not how it comes across. How does it come across? Bye. No, but it's there's a wistful tinge. Like, you're stupid. Like, an, I know. It's yeah. like an accent of wistfulness. Like, I wish you would have left earlier. That's what it sounds like when you Really? Say, yeah. I think you're just sensitive. Because there's a longing in my voice <laughs> when I say, bye. Look, there's a longing in your voice like there's subtlety in fruit notes in, Log in Lafroig 10. I can find the fruit notes. <laughs> so it can... Other people. All right, so uh, Alex England, yes. a magnificent bastard, yes. gave us two bottles that we already reviewed in 2018. Well, now I'm super concerned because I've been doing my very obviously wistful bye yeah. to like everybody that I am departing from. And now you're telling me it's kind of an asshole move. It's a dick move. You're thinking about it? It's being perceived as a dick move. <laughs> and I'm throwing it out there. There's no dick. There's just wistful? There's no dick. There's just wistful. Uh, it's like, it's like I already miss you. Bye. This is like when Bugs Bunny, when the abominable snowman is like, I'm going to hug you and squeeze you and call you George. You're calling me the emotional, abominable snowman. Yes. Abominable snowman. Yes. Of feelings. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I'll call Brady. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Alex England sent in things, things well, and we... Well, well, um, just real quick. The smoothest thing that's going to happen on this episode is the top of your head. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Anyway, <laughs> uh, we already reviewed these in 2018. It's, benevolent it's bastard? the exact same. So I think this is a benevolent bastard, Alex England. Alex England, you benevolent bastard. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wh wh where is it from? California. No, no, the name of the thing. What was the whiskey? Oh, it was Lost Spirits. I like Lost Spirits. I know, Abomination. It's a good thing. I know, it's the exact same two that we did last and time. And that was, well, we're going to get to it. Mm -hmm. That was, they're doing the, like a rapid aging technique. And they're sourcing scotch. And okay. they're making, or sourcing, I think right. they were sourcing scotch. Okay. Anyway, they're doing things. But of all of the rapid aging techniques that are being played with, I think. Theirs is the most interesting. I thing. totally agree with that. Okay. Totally agree. Thank you, Alex. Ingram. Okay. Yeah. Now, thanks to Peter Golden. Yeah. We're going to be drinking easily accessible budget scotch for the next five days. <laughs> <laughs> is it is Magnificent Bastard? <laughs> He's Magnificent. Peter Golden, you Magnificent <laughs> Bastard. Uh, so this one, Scoresby. Scoresby's very, very rare. rare. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing I like about it yeah. is that it's very, very rare. rare, and it's aged thirty six months. They put the they put the letters in bold, so you know. No, that's how you know your scotch is good when the age statement is months instead of years, because <laughs> three years is the mi mi legal minimum. Wow. So wow, though. Whoa. What, what is happening on, I don't know. on this nose? Apples and throw up. No, you tell... <laughs> well, hold on. Hold on a second, though. Hold on a second. Because before we jump to any conclusions, before mm -hmm. we jump to any conclusions, we're going into this with the context, the spectrum, the expectations of an Irish. No, it wouldn't because of that musty malt note. Okay. Right? So if there's... If you found in monkey Go, shoulder... Let me, let, me tell you this, let me tell you this right now. I wasn't listening to you. I thought you said this is an Irish whiskey. No. Okay, this is a scotch. So it's freaking you out. Yeah, no, I was okay. like, wait, what is happening? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Scotch makes sense. That makes so much more sense now. Uh, okay. okay. So if you if you and Monkey Shoulder find a, a vomit note yeah. or a musty malt it's, vomit it's, note. No, it's not that. It's it's uh, feet. Yeah. Yeah. It's earthiness and feet. <sighs> and don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. I'm still gonna get in here. But if you like weird PD presentations. Yeah. This is a weird PD presentation. This, this is not smoked meats, savory ham. I don't know that it's peated at all. This is it's only malt. I think it's malt funk. How, only. Is this, how does this not have some type of earthy funk peat? How is that only malt? I don't malt? know, man. How is that only malt? Take man? a sip of it. It's so. But you get what I'm saying. It's Yeah, the, it's so the, musty. Weirdly earthy, peaty funk. It's a rotten log turned over. 
and then there's, doused with honey and vodka. There's mushrooms involved in this. Yeah, that's what I mean. Just yeah. that rotting log comes apart. Vegetation and there's your hair a, looks great. There's a hat. Great. Somewhere on my person, there's a yeah. hat. By the way, <laughs> I don't see a hat. I think it's on the floor. <laughs> oh, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> now you should leave it off. Your hair looks great. Yeah, it's fine. You're still jealous, though. Yeah. yeah. But not for long. <laughs> <You're so laughs> <laughs> uh, you know who used the you know who used the whiskey tribe promo code for a sponsor on earth? You did? I totally got it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm trying to find something nice to say. It's Wow, it's super young. Mm-hmm. Whatever promise of funky adventure is presented on the nose, yeah, it's so young and thin on the taste, it doesn't deliver. It, even on the nose, you're not expected for like a graceful, mature, rich thing. It's like, no. oh, maybe this is weirdly interesting. But then you get on the taste and it's so young and, and it's a thin presentation of those flat. notes. Because I could, I could go down for some like a, a funky mushroom adventure. Yeah, Yeah, I said it. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, that's right. But I, I get into that thing. It's like ah man, di like directionally, if it had a lot more time, so like, it could turn into it could turn into something weirdly interesting. You're, but this you're is... probably talking under ten bucks for this thing, right? So all right, well, but Let, let's just say it becomes a different conversation. Earlier today, right. we made a whiskey. Right. <laughs> Oh, we did. We rectified a vodka into a, a 160 year old fake whiskey recipe. Yeah. And it was not that dissimilar from this. No, I think it was infinitely better. I I, I think it was very dissimilar. I agree. <laughs> or I think it, was, it wasn't very dissimilar. It was in the same category. Okay. Like it's all floor level whiskey. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? <laughs> That's floor yeah, level. We're, we're in the basement here. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, uh, I but, like that better than what we're drinking here. But hold on, this conversation becomes did you say $10? Eh, easy. Ten to uh, fifty. Okay, so basically, yeah. Like, let's look at what we have at local. Basically, <laughs> as affordable as, as whiskey gets. Right. The cheapest whiskey gets. Now, in that conversation, I'm not saying this is a neat poor whiskey. My question then becomes: It's a mixer. Is it a mixer though? What are you mixing with this? Because uh, uh, Scotch soda. Okay. Scotch soda. You think just to funk up? Uh, just funk up. No, I just think it'll bear. You know it. The, weird, the YouTube algorithm probably thinks I'm saying like funk up. Oh yeah, yeah. But I'm saying funk <laughs> up. So there's the half the views on this channel. No, <laughs> <laughs> no it's 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 uh, yeah. Mm. Although this is the connoisseur's blended Scotch whiskey. You know what? It's like, and I know it's because it's young, but it's yeah. like the it's like it tastes like there's some neutral grain spirit mixed in there, like some vodka yeah. mixed in with this like weird earthy. <laughs> it really does, you know, but that's what happens when you get that new makey, that light new makey Scottish whiskey before, because the climate Yeah. at three, it still looks like this. Um, you it's know, the only thing you can say for it is I don't think they put food coloring in it. No, 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 they, to your point, like super, super yeah, light coloring. Yeah, that straw. Here. Yeah, 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 okay. We got the ah oh, lock picking lawyer from yeah. this, is this huge channel. I know, and yeah. and I think they did something over with the modern rogue uh, yeah. several months ago back in the day. Yeah, that's right. Nice video. Sometimes I think mm. uh, it would have been better if I started a whiskey channel, if only so uh, people would send me awesome whiskeys instead of awesome locks. <laughs> <laughs> Now, it is nicer that we get whiskeys instead of locks. Someone else commented, yeah. if you're good enough at lock picking, you don't need people to send you off some whiskey. That's right. <laughs> and he's a lawyer. Yeah. Like, worst case scenario, you just lawyer your way out of that. Yeah, right? you just defend yourself. Right. Because that always works out well. <laughs> yeah, that's how all the movies, the Hallmark movies where you're self-represented. And then he says, Ardbegs are in the same wheelhouse every time. He says, I'm not sure I'd agree with that one. What about Corey Vrecken, one of my favorite scotches? I always thought of that as a different breed from their other offerings, but maybe that's just me. So he was arguing that Ardbeg, that Ardbegs are diverse enough, they don't right. all live in the Ardbeg family. I'm gonna say that that's a connoisseur statement. I'm gonna well, say that someone that's lived in Ardbeg so enough I'm, to see a wide... I'm thinking about it. See, I, I, I'm, I'm showing off for the lock picking lawyer. Uh -huh. I'm gonna show okay. off my, my, my shadiness here. Daniel, I think we need a direct comparison. <laughs> oh, to, Ten and Corey Vrecken? To confirm or deny. I'm fine because anything other than this <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. Okay, so. Pretty much. I'm going to move on to the next question. Here. Wait, wait, wait. Mo, because here's what I'm going to say. Yeah. To me, that statement 
is it's like uh, when you get an interior designer who explains the 18 kinds of blue. Right. And a normal human is like, it's f***ing blue. <laughs> it's like, no, that's periwinkle. No, it's eggshell blue. Uh, David Hoffland. Uh, David Hoffland. Question to Daniel and Rex. Will you ever consider reviewing other spirits and drinks on the Whiskey Vault channel, such as gin, rum, brandy, wine, etc.? I don't think so, because we got our work cut out for us just to get through the whiskeys that we have backlogged here man. i put that in there just because we get that question all the time so i yeah. thought we'd finally say something out loud uh, i think I don't know, sure. there maybe would be like some weird one-off episode once or twice a year where we just kind of you know we get something interesting it's worth doing a comparison to whiskey i don't know but there's no plans at all for expanding outside of the world of whiskey until like the rum council of Whoever the hell gives us one hundred million dollars to? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Rum Vault. <laughs> yes. All these bottles. Yeah. <laughs> and they couldn't do it because they're a nonprofit. They go to the school. It, We'd be endowed for uh, forever. Which, no. To your point, it, yeah. it is more likely to happen on the Whiskey Tribe channel because yeah. we've already done like uh, a gin episode. That's it true. was why do whiskey makers love gin? Right. And they do. It's very common huh? that a whiskey maker, their next go-to spirit when they're at home, is drinking gin. Okay, so 10, and that's Corey Vrecken you just picked up. Okay. There's that. So there's so much more character and body and flavor bursting out of that Corey Vrecken, obviously. Yeah, I would say that these two whiskeys are very far apart in the Ardbeg family. Right. But I'm I'm going to go back to But arguing. it's still within the Ardbeg group. It's still within the Ardbeg family. Right. So uh, I th speaking as like from an outside view. Like you're not gonna find a Glen Morangy guy going, well I hate smoky whiskey, but I love that Corey Vrecken. It's like that's not how it, and probably also wouldn't speak with that accent. The Corey Vrecken is, <laughs> the Corey Vrecken is a beautiful whiskey. Yeah. The Ook Dog is my personal favorite. Yeah. Uh, but to your point, I think if you were to like side by side compare like the Laphroaig offerings compared to the Ardbeg offerings, yeah. you would find this is closer to the Ardbeg offerings than Laphroaig. Lagavulin. Or anything Kalila. else, Sam. Yeah. But it's a damn good whiskey nonetheless. Yeah. Here's the fight, steal and drink. If you fight me, I fight for a friend. To steal, may you steal your liver. And if you drink, may, may you drink, drink with us. us. Until the lockpicking lawyer breaks in and steals all of our whiskey. Because it's a vault and he's tempted. That's true. Shady ass lawyer. Bastard. The bomb war! Damn. And wait. We reversed it. Did we do it? Uh, ba, ba, da, da, da. That was we, my fault. We've been on break. I'm supposed to start. It's been a couple. Da, da, da. Okay. The bottle lord. <laughs> It's Jeremy and Rachel Sites. <laughs> Jeremy, Jeremy and Rachel Sites. You bottle. bottle. Yes, it's fine. It's fine. Don't worry about it.